Our talk on machine translation today is devoted to empty evaluation in general. We'll continue with the topic also next time, focusing on automatic evaluation. In my work, I follow a simple trick. I always start at the end. So before designing or even implementing an algorithm, I always ask what will be a success and to what extent have I succeeded. Without an evaluation measure or metric, as empty people tend to say, you would never know if your work is of any use. In natural sciences, including natural language processing, you always have to follow the golden rule of evaluation. Evaluate on unseen data. This is very different from, for example, examining pupils who would always feel very angry if you tested them on unseen exercises. So if you get a training corpus, some expected inputs, possibly also equipped with the outputs with reference translations, always put some of that aside and use it as the test set you use only the training set for training your system and also for looking at it. The test set should be used only very sporadically once a year or so to evaluate your system on. And the reason for this division is that you want to have at least some rough estimate of how your system will perform when given to the customer, when it operates on something that it was never expected to work on. Evaluating empty turns out to be pretty difficult. Even if we simplify the situation and consider just three levels of empty quality, such as worth reading, worth editing and worth publishing, we will get a certain level of disagreement among annotators. The main problem is that many diverse things can go wrong. Take these four sentences for the input Arbeiter stirzt der von Leiter schwer verletzt. The reference translation is worker falls from leather seriously injured. So candidate A makes an error in the plural. The verb choice is not perfect. And obviously, the word director is a bad lexical choice. Candidate B says workers fell from, from leather hard. This is almost fine, except for the plural. And there is missing the information about seriousness of the injury. If you look at the candidate C, worker rushed from leather we would disagree with the lexical choice, but then the main problem comes, schwer verletzt. There is an untranslated part of the sentence. The candidate D is also very interesting. It says, worker fell from leader, heavily injurious. So here, the word is superficially similar. It looks as a typo, but it, it is actually a bad lexical choice again. And obviously these two things do not quite agree, and this is not injuries, this is a a verb injured in some form. If we go for absolute ranking, which means putting the translation into the three levels of translation quality, I would probably put all of them into the box worth editing. The absolute ranking can be also done on two separate scales, fluency and adequacy. Fluency reflects how well the translation reads in the target language, regardless of the source. And adequacy reflects how well the meaning is preserved. For example, the candidate A Workers rushed from director, seriously injured, is obviously very good in terms of fluency. But the meaning is totally distorted. Another option is relative ranking, where the absolute categories are not important. And all we want is to order the candidates from best to worst, possibly putting some of them into the same rank. So if I were doing this, I would probably put candidate B on top. Workers fell from leather hard. And I would possibly put candidate D as the second choice, hoping that the reader will not notice the typo with the letter or read leader. Candidate C would be third one in my ranking, worker rushed from leather, schwer verletzt. And candidate A, which reads very well, is deceiving, so therefore I would put it on the lowest rank. Different annotators may, however, have different opinions, and also the intended use plays a certain role. For post-editing, for example, drop negation is just a tiny edit, but it destroys the meaning completely. So what if we just mark what is wrong in the sentence, and then someone else would decide how important the error is? Candidate E shows that this is also not a perfect method. Worker fell from, from leather, heavily injuries. Here we can either fix the ending heavily into heavy, heavy injuries, or we can fix the ending here, changing the wording to heavily injured. 
As we have seen, it is better to agree on a reference translation if we want to mark deviations from it. So how many correct translations are there in fact? Let's take a simplified sentence from, uh, that we have seen before. Arbeiter stirs the von Leiter. The verb can be, can be translated as fell. The arbeiter can be translated as worker. So the first translation that we have created is worker fell from leather. However, there are other options how to translate the verb. It could be worker fell down. And we suddenly have two options, worker fell from leather and worker fell down from leather. Another option would be to translate the arbiter as employee. And instead of two reference translations, we suddenly have four. Every lexical choice simply multiplies the number of correct translations by a factor of two or more. And so do the changes in word order. It is thus not surprising that we can easily get to dozens or hundreds of thousands correct translations. In our small experiment uh, with translation into Czech, two annotators were asked to spend at most two hours per single sentence. Each of them produced dozens or hundreds of thousands of correct translations. And yet the intersection of those two reference set was almost always empty. A number of other manual anti-evaluation methods have been proposed in the past. And you can find the links on our website. See the link below. So here I'd like to mention just a recent attempt of the EU project QT Launchpad that tried to put together various classifications into big classification hierarchy of issue types. When reduced to the core minimum, we see that there is the fluency, which reflects how well the target sentence reads in the target language, and accuracy, which reflects how well the source sentence is translated into the target sentence. The verity then checks how well the target sentence fits the target world. Take German instructions to drive on the right-hand side of the road and translate them to English. If you translate them perfectly, the effect would be still disastrous when applied in Australia and legal texts are much worse. We have seen today that empty evaluation depends on the intended use and that it is difficult to agree both on relative and absolute ranking as well as on marking of individual errors. Empty evaluation nevertheless remains one of the cornerstones of the field and best practices are established especially at recurring uh, annual campaigns such as the workshop of uh, statistical machine translation or WMT.